Ladies and gentlemen, it's our pleasure to welcome three-time Masters champion Phil Mickelson to the press building. Uh, welcome back, Phil, and uh, thank you uh, for your time. This represents your, the 15th year, your first Masters victory, also your first major victory. And uh, I guess one of the things you'd like to know is uh, where does that rank among your career highlights? And number two, uh, what do you remember from that tournament? It's, it's so fun for me to come, come back to this, this uh, special place and reminisce and, and think about uh, those special victories. But uh, the 04 Masters was uh, one of the greatest moments of my career and, and the, the excitement of winning as well as the, uh, having the pressure put off for finally win, to finally win a major uh, felt great. And I, I look back and uh, relive that jump and relive that moment. It was just a special, special time. This season has already featured a few highlights, including uh, your first uh, AT&T Pebble which is your 44th victory. Um, and how do you, you have such success here at Augusta. How do you feel about going into this week? It's, uh, this, is a, this is a place that um, you drive up Magnolia Lane and just things change for everyone. You, you just uh, have that special feeling, that special uh, remembrance of when you were a kid and dreaming of coming here and, and playing, and it brings out oftentimes the best in everyone. And uh, I'm certainly hoping that's the case here. Um, I enjoyed that uh, tournament at AT&T very much. I think that there's a, a very similar style of play during those weeks as there is here. And um, I'm looking forward to getting on this golf course where I don't feel so, so handcuffed that I can go ahead and let loose a little bit. Thank you. All right, we'll open up for questions now, please. Bill, how has your preparation been? Now you came up last week for a few days, and then uh, you know now we've had this weather. How how does that change it, and uh, how how has it been going? It's um, an interesting year with our schedule change, and I think that the tour has done a phenomenal job of of uh, altering the schedule to really make it the best product for for the public and to make it exciting and so forth. Uh, but there are some individual challenges that I've had to deal with. And one of them is that I usually like to play the week before major and I'm having to alter that a little bit this year. And so how, how's the, how am I uh, going to try to get the, my best performance this week when I'm not playing the week before? So I came here four days, four days um, last week and spent four days on the course and, and uh, did a lot of course prep and, and so forth. And then went home and, and worked on my game. And so we'll see. I mean, I, I think that uh, I'm just as curious as anybody. It's, um, a chance to be fresh and ready, but it's also a chance to be maybe not as sharp. I, I'm just not quite sure how it's going to play out. Ignacio? Bill, <clears throat> I was watching your practice this morning. Uh, it seems to me that you were trying to keep your club face more stable through impact. Uh, is that correct? Uh, I usually like to be as unstable as possible, but today I was changing that up. Yes, uh, tried to make it a little bit more stable. So I'm agreeing with you, yes. Uh, I, I think today, and granted I was hitting some balls in the rain, what I, all I wanted to do today was just speed it up, get my speed up, make sure that I'm uh, sharp, that I can accelerate and, and uh, hit it the, the distance that I want to. I anticipate it being warm. I anticipate distance being a big factor. And if it rains, distance will be an even bigger factor. But uh, I want to make sure my speed is up. And so that that's what today's session was. It just... Um, uh, top out and see what, see how fast I could get it. And then, uh, try to build up to maximize speed throughout the week. I think if I drive it well, uh, my short irons wedge play putter will take over. That's kind of the hope I've been working on those as well. But, uh, for me, if I drive it well, I should have a good week. William. Bill, uh, Rory's obviously getting a lot of attention this week, playing well, trying to round out the career grand slam, looking back even to Oh four for you. Can you speak to the balance of believing your game is in a good enough position to win a major but being able to maybe cope mentally if it turns out not to be your week. Yeah, that's always a challenge when you put, put so much emphasis on winning a particular event, but it's also the chance to, to bring out your best. And he's had such a phenomenal start to the year. He's been playing such great golf uh, consistently week in and week out that I think contending is a given. I think he'll be in contention. And then it, you just need those little breaks, the little putts here, there to go in, little things to happen that, uh, that push you over the winter circle. And uh, that's uh that's probably all that he's waiting for this week. You can't force it. It just has to happen. Kyle? How much do you notice uh, either patrons or even other players not having their phones out this week compared to other weeks? 
the the, uh, the people, the fans on tour have done a great job of putting it on silent. So even though you see phones, you don't flinch or worry about it. It hasn't really been an issue uh, too much. And um, I feel like the knowledge of the spectators and fans have increased so much that uh, it hasn't been an issue. And so I don't anticipate it being much different, even though nobody has uh, phones out here today. Uh, I think when the when we first went to that rule years ago, allowing cell phones on the course, I was certainly worried, but it increased the fan experience so much that uh, I've kind of changed my thought on it. I think it's really been a good thing for the tour. And I think at some point, uh, the knowledge base of the fans here will be such where, where they'll be able to have their phones and not uh, because they'll have it on silent. Nobody will, uh, it won't affect play at all. Steve. Yeah, uh, Phil, um, just wondering what you thought about the new and improved number five and if uh, given the, the increasing difficulty there and, and I'm just wondering if that little corner of four, five, and six might be deserving of a nickname uh, like, a, like a certain corner on the other side of the course. I think that the stretch of four, five, and six has always been a difficult stretch that you try to get through in par. Uh, you try to use the first uh, hole two and three, try to get under par make your way through four, five, and six. And then um, you always looked at seven and eight as a birdie hole. You don't look at seven as, as that birdie hole anymore, but uh, you try to make one up on eight or nine coming in. I think four, five, six, seven is a very difficult four hole stretch and, and making five a little bit harder, I think is a good thing. I always like making hard holes harder. I think the guys that are playing well will be able to make par uh, there much easier and pick up a quarter or half a stroke on the field that uh, are not able to make par. And I think that uh, ultimately that's a good thing. Mark? So, a Tiger was in here a little while ago, and he was talking about how his win at, at East Lake kind of reinforced that he could still win and do this again. And obviously, you just won, you know, a couple of months ago. Even for guys as accomplished as you guys are, does it take, you know, that to reinforce that and, you know, with your confidence? And, and if so, you know, what does that do for you going ahead? Like, for example, for you this week, you know, what does that do for you? I think it's a big thing heading into this week to have won a tournament um, Tiger winning the Tour Championship, myself winning at and I think having that little success, that, those many successes are an important thing to increase your, your chances uh, here at Augusta. But you never know how, how it's going to go. You never know how the weather's going to play out, how your game's going to play out, and so forth. So you need some good breaks, but uh, I think it's a big thing heading in to, uh, to have that confidence of having won uh, for, for a player. Tara? Well, Brooks Kepka was in here earlier, and Related story of when he attended here as a kid and staked out the parking lot, and you turned down an autograph. Yeah, well, he shouldn't have been there. <laughs> yeah, I was. I, I, I was think I told to him say, that too. <laughs> I was going to say one. Why didn't you sign? But you answered that. But like in fairness, too, you know, you've been out here long enough that you, you know guys are coming on tour telling you how they tried to get your autograph as a kid. What's that journey like for you? What you know, just and, and then you see them winning majors and that. How do you handle that? How do you like it? Dislike it? Make you feel old? Not old? What? Yeah, when reporters ask you about stuff like that, it makes me feel old. Sure, so thank you for bringing that up. Uh, it's fun for me to to uh, play with these young guys and to, to uh, see their game develop. It's fun to it's it's actually fun stories that a guy like Brooks Kepka, who's won uh, what three majors now recently, uh, has has uh, been out here following as a kid. It's it's a little weird, but it's pretty cool too. And uh, to be able to play with him and see his greatness shine and and to be a part, you know, somewhat part of that or a witness to it as well as compete against it. It's been fun. And um, I enjoy it. There's a lot of good young players like that, that, uh, that I have a lot of respect for that were barely born or if not, weren't, weren't born when I started uh, playing the tour tour. Joy. Phil, uh, last week we had a very historic tournament over here, Augusta national women's amateur. Before the tournament, I had spoken to a few of the girls about one shot from the Masters that they would like to play uh, during the practice round over here on Friday. And a surprisingly large number of girls said that it would be the your shot from the 13th hole on the 13th hole. Uh, so two, two part question. One is, how, do you, how cool do you think that kind of a legacy is? And secondly, uh, what did you think about the Augusta National Women's Amateur? Well, I think the two biggest growth areas in the game of golf are with juniors and with women. And this tournament and this place here at Augusta National has made efforts to help grow interest and give young ladies and young, young kids something to aspire 
uh, to at a young age. And I think that's a very big thing because when I was a kid, I would dream of playing in the Masters and I watched Seve win and I would dream of that. And it gave me something to work towards, to dream about during my practice sessions. And it's a big thing when you're, when you're young and to have dreams like that and to have the opportunity to play here and compete in the drive chip and putt or to play in a, a women's amateur event here or any event here uh, gives you something to aspire to. And I think that uh, that's a big thing uh, in helping to promote the interest in the game in the two largest growth areas. Kirk, in the back. So the shot on 13, um, I wonder if any of them tried it from that spot because what's interesting about that is uh, it would have been from a, a kind of a hooked lie for a right-handed player, and they would have had to open the face to, uh, to fit it through that gap. And I think it would have been a heck of a lot tougher shot opening the face and went, for me, which I was able to close the face and get a little more coverage on the ball out of the pine needles. I think it was a much, I think it was an easier shot for a left-handed player than it would have been for a right-handed player. Kirk? Yeah, Phil, now that uh, Tiger's shown he can win again on the tour and is, uh, you know, throwing the uh, throwback turtleneck to bring back his old game, how would you assess his chances of uh, ever passing Jack for the majors title now? I just wouldn't rule him out. I've seen him do things with a golf ball and perform at a level higher than anything I've seen in the game. I just would never rule him out. And to see him uh, play the way he did with such control at the Tour Championship and compete in the majors the way he did at the British and PGA, I just think that uh, greatness is still in him, and uh, I, I would never rule him out. Richard. Thank you, Ron. Uh Phil, from a personal point of view, how do you handle Masters Week? Is it a family week for you or all business? It depends on how spring break uh, falls uh, with our kids. Spring break was last week, so a lot of the kids won't be able to come out till at least the weekend, if at all. And um, But it, it, this week, I always kind of just do my own thing and have scheduled um, – practice sessions and, and how I want to get get ready and be prepared and, and uh, recovery stuff and workout stuff and so forth. So each minute of, of the day is pretty much regimented for me. So it's not like we have a lot of uh, hang time. But uh, one of my fond memories in 2010 uh, was when my uh, middle daughter and I would go grab coffee before the rounds at this little coffee shop. It's not there anymore. And we would play chess, you know, three, four, five hours before the round. And those moments are something that I kind of cherish. You saw the one where I was in jacket at Krispy Kreme uh, that uh, is, a, is a little bit too close to home. I mean, that's kind of like who I am there, right? So uh, that was a special moment. And those little moments, like, you know, the greatest moments in life are those spontaneous moments with your family. And we've had a lot of those special moments here at Augusta, and, and uh, I love looking back on those. Barry? Well, as players get older, we kind of concentrate on whether they're going to be able to hit the ball as far as they used to. But I wonder if you think an older player – can improve putting. Can you can you get back to be the putter that you once were when you were rolling them in for them everywhere? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I, I remember five years ago, I was I was uh, struggling with the putter. I was terrible in stats, and then I had a, the last two or three years, I've been top ten in just about every stat by working on it and figuring some stuff out and and spending the time on it. I think that players that have had success can figure it out. It just takes a little bit of effort, a little bit of analysis, a little bit of effort. And uh, I think you can turn back the clock. But um, there's no reason now with the knowledge that we have in fitness, the knowledge we have in biomechanics, and, and the knowledge we have with nutrition and so forth, that we, we at a, a much older age than in the past, can't. we should be able to perform at a, a very high level. Steve? Phil, I, I think so, much, so many of us had a good laugh about the Jake Owen story. I'm curious if you could just tell us your side of it and, and what happened. About the what story? The, the Jordan's wedding about the... Oh, yeah. No, it happened exactly like he said. Yeah, uh, Jake nailed it. That was a, a verbatim. Ricky Fowler and I were talking. He was right there, and uh, Jake had a bunch of buddies behind him and thought he'd, uh, you know, come come show off a little bit, and I kind of shot him down. So, yeah. I, I, I can't tell it any better than he can. You know, it's much better coming from him. I didn't know he was going to say, you know, talk about it publicly, but, um, yeah, I, I mean, it's all true. It happened exactly like he said. Mike, you have your hand up. Uh, yes, Phil, over here. Okay, here we go. Uh, on Friday, you're playing your 100th career round here at Augusta National. I'm just wondering what that milestone means to you and if there's, you expect that there might be things out there that might still surprise you about this course. Well, there's always little subtle changes each year. You know, two greens usually get redone a little bit, and there's always little subtleties and nuances that 
you have to relearn. Every time I come out here and practice, I pick up a little something here or there that I did not know on how to play a certain shot from a certain position to pin a certain pin. Uh, but but greens number five and number eighteen were were slight were redone and there are subtle changes subtle break changes and uh, it was important that uh, you know I pick up on that and 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 see that and so uh, I just uh, you know I, I like to write down some notes and so looking back on my notes they seem to change and evolve quite a bit over the years. The career round milestone what does that mean to you? I don't really, I didn't even know that till you brought it up. I just, I've been fortunate that I've played a lot of rounds here and I just cherish and love every one of them, even the practice rounds. Todd? Bill, how is the driver behaving over these practice rounds here? Do you feel any different with it than you have with previous drivers here? And, and you alluded to it earlier, but how important is it that you drive it well here? It, it doesn't seem like that used to be as big an emphasis as it is now. Well, when, when the addition of, you know, the, I don't know, hundreds or thousands of trees over the last, you know, 10, 12 years came into play, uh, and, uh, you know, now we have tree lined on 17, and we have uh, so many more trees uh, on seven and a number of holes, it is very critical to, to drive the ball uh, accurately, even though it um, looks like there's enough room, it's not as though it's wide open. But there's enough room where you don't feel handcuffed, where you feel like you have to steer the ball. So I kind of let loose. And, and if I, like I say, if I drive the ball reasonably straight, I'm going to be fine. And there's plenty of room to drive it straight here. Are you driving it fairly straight right now? I don't know, but I'm hitting it far. And that's all I care about right now. <laughs> uh, two more questions. Uh, John? Uh, Phil, I'm just curious. When you were here last, uh, or last week practicing, I was, what you were doing playing practice rounds on the range, around the putting green, uh, any particular things you were doing while you were out here? So I just come out and try to learn the golf course, take notes, uh, learn the greens, learn the breaks. You know, we're not allowed to have a greens book, so we don't know the exact uh, contours and so forth. So I just have to take notes on what every putt does, and um, I just kind of – kind of do my own thing there and, and take notes from over the years. So I'm analyzing if there's any changes if and make sure I'm just validating the notes, making sure that they are, they're accurate, that the, the, the putt or, and chip does exactly what, what I thought in the past or wrote down. So I'm just analyzing that stuff and, and trying to do all my course prep a week before so that when I get this to, to the, the tournament site this week, all I'm worrying about is executing, getting my game to be sharp, and I'm not having to worry about golf course and, and, and what's going on, what changes have been made. I'm alri I've already made those decisions on how I'm going to play. Michael, final question. Um, Brooks said, uh, going back to the auto autograph uh, question uh, or the situation there, the, um, uh, Brooks says he has your autograph now. Do you have his? <laughs> I have it a bunch. Yeah, we saw, we have uh, team flags from Ryder Cups, Presidents Cups, all that kind of stuff that we we share. So I have a bunch of his autographs. Absolutely, and I'm proud to have them. <laughs> I did it in the appropriate location. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all very thank much, you. Phil. Thank you, buddy, and good luck this week. Huh?